Maricar asks me the question, with CERB set to expire, what changes to EI will be made to ensure that nobody is left behind? Um, I have a picture I'm gonna show you on the back to work bonus uh, while I continue talking and trying to answer this question. So we, we pitched a back to work bonus, which would phase out the CERB uh, top up. Uh, Government programs should never disincentivize work. I answered a question previously. There's an innate dignity to working, whether it's part-time, you know, people working as many hours as they are able to, as they are comfortable to, as they want to, depending on the circumstances that they have. The government's announcement is, is threefold. So the Canada recovery benefit is for workers who are self-employed, who are not eligible for EI and cannot resume work. The Canada recovery sickness benefit is for workers who are ill or who must self-isolate for reasons related to COVID-19. And the Canada recovery caregiving benefit is for workers who are unable to work because they're caring for a child, dependent family member, or because school or daycares are closed due to COVID-19. Couple of numbers here. So let's go over some numbers from the CERB. So since March 15th, CERB has paid 69.37 billion in benefits to 8.6 million unique applicants. And to date, there were 4.1 million applicants who have since returned to the labor market. So that's about half that number. Um, the three new programs are expected to cost 22 billion and the expansion of EI benefits is projected to cost 7 billion, bringing total cost to 37 billion, including the one month CERB extension. Um, then there's the EI eligibility requirements. So this is important, I'm gonna go, go over these. Um, the EI eligibility requirements are temporarily changed to 120 insurable hours across Canada with a minimum regular benefit rate of 400 per week for at least 26 weeks, as the CFIB, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, has warned that qualifying to collect EI for 26 weeks after working for only 120 hours will disincentivize returning to work. So that is a problem inherent in such a system, especially one size fits all, all across Canada. Um, no, the old system was as soon as you earned a dollar over a thousand dollars, you would lose the entire two thousand dollars. We have proposed a system where you incrementally begin to lose a certain amount, but you're always made better off by working more and more hours. I, I thought that was an elegant system that addressed the potential for a prof poverty trap to be created where it disincentivized people from returning to work. I've talked to a lot of business owners who are finding it difficult to encourage workers to return. Um, because they were simply on the CERB and they didn't want to lose the CERB just because they wanted to work more hours. So it was a disincentive. And frankly, people will likely fall through the gaps. I have people in my writing who are going to fall through, the crack, uh, through these cracks in these programs because every time you create criteria for a government program, program you are inherently uh, creating criteria to keep certain people out. Certain people will be left behind. And that's a choice the federal government is making by the design of these programs. Uh, they could have simply faced it out more easily through CERB and then uh, assured themselves that people would be encouraged to return to work and uh, through uh, getting new work opportunities, they would have been able um, to simply uh, get off the CERB at their own pace and put them in, in control of their own lives of how much they wanna work and how many uh, federal benefits they wanna lose compared to how many extra hours they wanna take on to earn more income. So Michael, I'm not sure um, on this particular issue, how much we align, but people will be left behind because there is criteria created in these programs. They didn't consult with us. They simply created them and announced them. We found out when you did uh, what the eligibility criteria would be.